Welcome back to my channel. I'm Roxanne. It's Thursday. That means I have a When Calls the Heart inspired recipe. And today I am making mm, this, 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 this. Hope Valley is a busy place. So while this and this and this was going on, so was this. So if you're a true hearty or you're, you are all over social media, you probably know by now that When Calls the Heart is an actual place. <laughs> it is filmed in Langley, British Columbia on a farm. And the farm is hundreds of acres. It's like its own little town. And it is really a magical place. On social media, the owners of the farm, it's Mac Eines. I think that's how you pronounce it. And if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I apologize. It's M-A-C with a capital I-N-N-E-S. And that family runs the farm. As far as I know, I think there's like three generations that are there only from what they're posting on social media. So they do have an Instagram account and they do have an account on Twitter and they have a website, all of which I will link and I will show you. So I want to get started. It's a really easy recipe, but I have to say thank you to the family because just the other day they posted this gorgeous picture. I'll show you again of blackberries and blackberries. I live in South Jersey. They're um, being harvested and they are ready to uh, be bought up at all of our food markets. So I bought some and I said, hmm, they're making a fruit crisp. So I am going to make it too. And they also suggested that they would serve it with ice cream. So if you want to serve it with ice cream, you know I have an ice cream recipe from Ned Yost's Mercantile. You could go check that out. I think it's how sweet it is or the sweetest moment and the uh, thumbnail has um, Allie and Nathan on it. So that's a really easy recipe. My kiddos and my family beg to make it all of the time. My Lexi's like, we need to make it again. It's that simple and delicious. So let's get started. So we're going to make a crisp. Now the crisp is just that a crisp. People get confused with cobbler, crisp, and crumble. And real quick, I'll give you a quick little lesson so cobbler means biscuit doughy type of a crust and a um, crumble is when you just have the flour the butter and the sugar where the crisp is a flour butter sugar and oats because the oats get toasty and crispy and that is what we're making today it's very simple and as we make it we're going to chat about the magical place of hope valley which is on the jamestown movie set i should have said that a few minutes ago i'm so sorry um that is where you can find them that is how they're located on social media jamestown movie set and you will see a lot of the sets that are um, being used right now while they are filming some of them are real they have these cool stories which i will chat about with you at the end once it is made the crisp and we're enjoying the crisp i'll chat and talk a little bit more about that so in this section let's just dive into the actual um recipe so the first thing i did was i took a glass dish you can do round if you want but i took a uh, it should be glass and i buttered it put butter all over the bottom and now what i'm going to do is get the fruit ready you want about six cups of fruit so i have four cups of blackberries here and i'm going to toss them in blackberries are um they break apart they're not a substantial fruit they hold a lot of water like blueberries and raspberries do and then i have um two more cups this makes the six four plus two is six of apples. And you can pick any apple you want. Um, you can see it's starting to go brown. I just sliced them. Make them very thin. They do break down easy. You can use any apple you want. I used a regular red Macintosh, I think it was. Now to this, you just want to get the fruit ready. So this is after, step one is washing your fruit. This is step two where you prepare all the fruit. So I'm just gonna give it a little toss. You'd want to be gentle with it. And then to this mixture, uh, and you know at the very end, I will have all the actual measurements and ingredients. I'm going to add sugar. The sugar is depending upon how ripe or tart or sweet the fruit is. So this is being tossed in. Then with it, you can add lemon juice. I'm not adding lemon juice. I'm adding orange juice because I love the flavor of apple and orange together. And then this, of course, is... Um, the arrowroot, or you can use, it's the thickener, it makes it velvety, or you can use cornstarch. And I'm gonna give that a little stir. I'm gonna dump it right into there, and then dump it into there. So when it breaks down, it 
has this yummy, velvety, syrupy um, consistency. Okay, now I'm gonna sprinkle that all around and add that in. So we had three tablespoons of orange juice and we had six teaspoons, I'm sorry, it was three teaspoons of orange juice and six teaspoons of um, thickener, which I don't like to add flour because it has such a raw taste to it. So you usually add one teaspoon of like um, cornstarch or the arrowroot to one cup of fruit. And you could add more if you want, if you have something that breaks down a lot, like strawberries, you know, blueberries, and you just give it a toss. You mix it all up. Oh my God, it smells delicious already. And I just use plain old white sugar. Now I see a lump there of cornstarch and I wanna break that up because nobody wants a lump of that in their um, food or in their bite, the bite that they take. Okay, I'm giving it a good toss and then I'm gonna put it right into here. So the fruit is evenly distributed and I'm just going to put that aside. So next we're going to do the next step, which is step three, and that's to prepare the crumble. Before I get started, I want you to know that you can also, not the crumble, the crispy part, um, the streusel part, um, you can freeze this and then take it out and use it whenever you want. Okay, here we I go. I forgot to say that I did add some vanilla to that. Put some vanilla in there. You could put cinnamon. Um, I'm actually gonna sprinkle it in right now. I'm getting ahead of myself here, and I made a faux pas, but hey, I'm not a professional. I do this out of love. All right, I'm mixing it all around. I guess instead of me channeling my inner Gustave right now, I'm more like channeling Clara or my inner Elizabeth, you know? They make little mistakes along the way, but they do everything with love. Okay. Got that ready. All right, so now this is easy. This is one cup of flour, one cup of oats, and um, a half a cup of brown sugar. You can use regular sugar, but brown sugar is what gets crispy and yummy and caramelizes on the top. So um, I don't have regular flour in here, only because I'm gluten-free, but there's also another reason, and I strongly suggest you try this. If you do not have a nut allergy, adding nut to the streusel is delicious. So I have ground almonds, which makes an almond flour. I don't grind the almonds, you could yourself. I buy it that way. I can get it at Target, Target. Is there a Target near you? You can get it easy and um, easily. So I have a cup of flour, a cup of the oats, and then a half a cup of the sugar. I'm going to mix it all up. And to that, you add a cup of butter. Mm -hmm. You thought this was going to be figure friendly, didn't you? <laughs> With all that fruit. It's not. It's not too bad. Everything in moderation. So a lot of recipes call for, and I always, these are my own recipes. If it was somebody else's, I would let, I would link it and, and say that before I even began. But one of the fun things that you can do with this is instead of getting a pastry cutter or crumbling it with your hands with cold butter, like a lot of recipes call for, I melt the butter because then all of the dry ingredients absorbs the delicious, yummy butter. And I don't know, I feel like it gets crispier. It doesn't ruin it. So if you wanna try it, try it, experiment. All right, so I'm going to add that in right here, then I'm gonna put it on the top. So I forgot to say that I have preheating is my oven at 350, you know, the good old 350, and this is going to bake for about 30 minutes. I'm going to test it out, and you want the fruit to be bubbling and soft and the streusel on the top to be crisp. I'm gonna test it at um, 30 minutes because it is a larger dish. It might take another 10. We all live in different areas. We have different kinds of ovens. I have a gas oven. So you always have to like adjust for that, okay? So I will be back. My melted butter, one cup, and it's salted. That way I don't have to add any salt to the recipe. And like I was saying before, you can add to this recipe um, 
nuts if you want it, but that's why I put the almond flour in there. Mm, it's gonna be so good. People like to serve it warm and um, add ice cream, like I said. Some put like a creme fraiche or whipped cream. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So I have the glass dish. Hopefully you can see what's happening here. If not, I will come close. I'm no expert, I always feel like it's gonna dump out. Then I'll put it onto here and put it right in the oven. And then the next time I come back, we will be enjoying this together and chatting more about the magical place of Hope Valley, which is a real place and you can even take a tour. I'm actually thinking with my fan group that I belong to, organizing a trip to there. Hope COVID doesn't hurt us though. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, it's all mixed up. It's all wet and yummy. I'm definitely Clara and Elizabeth in the kitchen today because I spilled a little, but that's okay. Now I'm going to spread this out on the top and we are good to go. The whole process of getting it ready takes 15 minutes and then 30 minutes to bake and it is just like super easy, late. This is a late summer um, deliciousness to enjoy and I cannot tell you I cannot wait to talk about Hope Valley which I know is the McIan's Farms which I also know is um, known as the Jamestown movie set has lots of names but could you imagine walking around like you're there like Lucas could come out of the saloon with a teacup on the top at any minute or Nathan could ride in on his horse or Clara and Jesse could be silly coming out of the mercantile or Allie could be up to something fishing at the pond oh my gosh could you imagine just walking around where they are I know I know I know I'm obsessed I know, I do know this, but it's all in good fun. Okay. And this, look at this, oh my goodness. So I just put cream on it, a little bit of cream. My mother used to do that and it kind of melted all over it, like a melted ice cream. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I feel a little crooked here. Let me see if I can fix the camera. Okay, so we're gonna chat about the set. Okay, the Jamestown movie set. They said, I, I think they changed their Instagram account and it used to be Jamestown movie set, but they couldn't fit the set part. So it's just Jamestown movie. That's how you can find them on Instagram. And let's start with this picture. Now, if you see me looking off to my side, it's because I got a lot going on here. Not only am I, you know, sampling this thank you thank you to the uh, family who farms but i also have over here my little my little mr bouchard you know my tea and i also have all the pictures that are here which i'm showing over here so we got a lot going on so anyway sit down and and get comfy here we go so um, let's start off with Carriage Lane. So this is Carriage Lane, or what they call now is Carriage Lane. So these trees originally were there, I think there's 40 acres of them, and they were there because they were gonna chop them down and become toilet paper. Instead, now I think they're using them for pulp, for other things, but anyway, they didn't get chopped down because Michael Landon Jr., as the story goes, I think I have it right, he saw it from an aerial view, and he's like, oh, let's see if we can use this for the When Calls the Heart set, and I think that's how it all began, but I love this because a lot of memories are made on Carriage Lane. It's like getting in and out of Hope Valley, and if you remember, one of my favorite things that happened is when... Um, so when Fiona had to borrow the car and drive, and she's the only one that actually had a license and everybody was giving her a hard time, and um, Rosemary hopped in and hopped a ride and then the car wound up breaking down and they were afraid to tell Henry and uh, they had to like get a ride back into town and then they had to hide the um, the car in the uh, at the blacksmith where that was where, oh yes, that is where Fiona's first love interest was. I wonder what happened to him, to Kevin. He was even in Jesse's wedding. He kind of like disappeared. Where did Kevin go? Mm, watch out, Mike. What if Kevin comes back, you know? Hickam, you know, Hickam and Fiona might be a thing. Anyway, a lot of memories are made on this road and going in and out, and it's a real place. So what's exciting is they do give tours, but of course they can't tour when the um, actors are there. 
And then COVID kind of put a kibosh on that for a while. But according to their Instagram account, they will start again. And I so want to get like a group of us together and go just to walk around like I was saying earlier. Now, I said it was hundreds of acres. I might be wrong, but I don't know. So I got to stop for a minute. I have to taste this crisp and have a sip of my tea. But let's talk about the crisp. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. Try it and then you know, please tell me what you think because when you tell me what you think, that's great. I do have taste testers and they, they're they honest, like especially, not all of them are my family members, but my sister, oh, she is like the biggest critic of everything, but she's usually right at what she says. But anyway, um, I'm gonna taste it. You tell me what you think. Recipe just wasn't it, couldn't get it right. Um, the measurements and the science behind it should be good, but then again, we all have different ovens, and then what I think might be a level of difficulty might be not be the same for you. So anyway, as I jabber on, I'm going to try it. Mm, it's very good. My sister, of course, could not be one of the taste testers because she is allergic to blackberry. So, all right, now a sip of tea. Mm. Now, I know that Lucas and Elizabeth went riding. I'm not quite sure where they were. Did they ride up and down Carriage Lane on their horses? Like, did we see the, you know, the magic of their, um, I know they had a ride out of town, right? When they went away to Union City. So was one of their magical walks along this way that helped along their romance? I don't know, I just love it so much. Okay, so anyway, here's another picture. This is of the church slash schoolhouse across from the pond, and that's the pond that Jack was rowing Elizabeth on back in the day. And that's also the pond that Allie fishes in with Nathan and hopefully with Fiona because she did make a comment about the, you know, the whole hair scene. I've talked about that before. If I haven't, go into one of my prediction videos. But anyway, um, I'm predicting that we will get to see more of the pond. I feel like we'll see the children playing around the pond. We're definitely going to get going to get an alley fishing in the pond with Nathan. Absolutely, we are. And if you see across the pond, as I was saying, is the, um, this, the house slash um, church. But actually, fun fact, is that really was row house number three. Because when you see the row of houses, there's only two. And, and most Hardys know this. There's only two actual physical structures. And then they, you know, digitally put the rest in. And there used to be three. But they took that one and they created the new um, house slash um, church. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. I have, they have beautiful um, pictures of that on postcards that you could buy from the Edify store. So the fun fact that they shared was that the there was a real church um, on the farm. It was, they said, built by neighbors. And they built it because then they could come and use the farm as a retreat and, and gave it to them. And then what happened was they took and rebuilt that church and they used the original church to be the mercantile for um, Ned Yost and they added to it and that's what this picture is. Now, anybody recognize this right here? This was Elizabeth in season one when she came. She lived in an apartment up above and then she set it on fire when she was trying to wash and dry her dress. So that actual structure is still around and it is placed in like downtown Hope Valley. I think it is between the mercantile and the water tower. Now, if we were taking a tour, we'd hear all these great stories. We'd also learn that they have um, a sister farming farm that's attached onto the property and they um, have bees and they do honey and they have, um, they grow barley and they have a brewing company so you can have a beer <laughs> if you drink beer and they have, they grow hops, all that stuff goes into beer making. Free range chickens and you can buy eggs. So it's really cool. I mean, I, I really want to go. And now let's look at one more picture. So apparently this was a house that was used in a totally different, it wasn't a show, a movie, and they kept it. And then they, what they did was they turned it into um, Nathan's jail slash um, office slash 
Mountie, it's not headquarters, but station, I guess. And I have a prediction about this. I think that this is the year for Nathan, okay? We're going to hear a lot about Nathan. We're going to see a lot of the inside of that jail. I think there might be some Pinkertons that are gonna spend some time in that jail. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we get to know more about him while he's in the jail, like within conversations with other people, maybe some insights, more insights to his background like we, we already did when his poor father was in the jail. And wouldn't it be cool if there was like a Nathan little kissing loving scene, cause that's like his little space, you know? He shares the house with Allie, but he, you know, the jail and the uh, station is for him. So I don't know, I think that would be kind of cool. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it fun knowing that it's a real place? I know, it's not a real place, but it is a real place. I'm obsessed. Thank you for um, indulging me in my obsession and chatting with me. I really love it when you leave comments. It's like so much fun for me. I feel like I'm connected. And I, as I always say, there's a lot of, there are many months until, it, you know, those 12 episodes come out again. Thank goodness it's 12 now. Okay, you have a good day and comment below, but remember to be kind. Bye.